اقرا وخيها ورتل القران اصبح بصوتك اسمع لك وانا اقرا Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's your brother Dal Loka speaking, Musa ibn Abnan, the Ikra Club. Um, today, and, um, which is the first episode of the Ikra Club, we're going to discuss this book actually, which is called Illuminating in the Darkness uh, by uh, Habib Akande. Um, just an introduction on what this actually is. We've planned to read books and to discuss them for you guys. In just a really brief like 10 to 15 minutes and then just to revive this sunnah of reading you know ikra which is one of the well it's is the first revelation the right first revelation. so we want to revive this because at the moment we have a lot of people engaging in dawah you know writing stuff but i'm asking myself where they're getting the information from of course reading there's no other way around this in this dean you have to start reading books and that's what we're going to do in this Inshallah. series um, for this week, as I said, it's illuminating the darkness. For next week, uh, we have The Devil's Deception. By uh, Ibn al-Jawzi, inshallah, Tilbis Iblis. Uh, the Devil's Deception. It basically discusses, you know, about the shaitan and, you know, how he deceives, about the different things, bid'ah, about the sunnah, things like this. Yeah. So, inshallah, this is going to be the next uh, episode. We're going to be discussing this book, so stay tuned for that, inshallah. Inshallah. And let's get down to illuminating the Okay, um, Habib Akande is, um, he's literally, um, um, I think he, he studied, uh, he graduated at Kingston University. Okay. And he did his first class BA of, uh, in business and film studies. Okay. You know? So, he's not a scholar or anything. But what he mainly did was he was collecting information. Um, this book, just to, to start with it, the structure of it, it's an amazing book. There's so much information in here. It looks really thin though, yeah, but there's so much information in here. So that I actually have to take notes to explain to you what is happening in this book. Um, so to discuss the structure, you have part one and part two. Part one is merely about the perception of, of, of black people and North Africans in Islam that includes the colors, uh, the uh, anthropology, like how the Arabs actually perceive black people and North Africans and non-Arabs, um, which is perfectly done, to be honest. I really like this book. Um, so just to, to, to um, discuss point one. Point one is about the Arabic language and how um, the color black, you know, is in, re in relation with the... Do you have any ideas, like... About have you ever thought about this before? About the color black? Yeah, the color black. In relation to the Arabic language? Yeah. No, not really. Not really. It's so interesting that um, that the color black ex actually, um, th the root words yeah, are so, wa, and da, um, and which, which has so many connotations actually, and not the way we think it has. For example, um, black is mentioned 10 times in the Quran, and three times it's um, related to the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Yeah, um, a Sajid, yeah, a master. And yeah, it's really amazing just to see how, how precise the Arabic language is and in, 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 in that it, it covers it from a whole completely different mind frame that mm. we think of. So, so the book basically covers blacks and North Africans yes. in Islam yeah. from an Islamic perspective. Yes, exactly. Okay, mashallah. So, bro, what's the what's the basic thing? What's the basic message of the book? Like, what is uh, is it uh, Habib? What's Habib explaining? So, you know what is so interesting about this book is that he actually takes a lot of um, references from other books that I never could imagine that these classical scholars wrote about it. For example, Ibn Jawzi, okay, a Tabari, you know, a Tabari, yeah. the the historian. Um, even Jawzi, um, well, all these classical scholars, right? Yeah. Um, and he talks about how history, like Islamic history, and 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 just just the perception of black people in general were, because a lot of people say you know this misconception of Islam equals slavery or Islam motivated slavery. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that book, the book discusses all these things, okay. and and it, it tackles each point. It's, if you would ask me, I would, I would say it's more of a historical okay. like reference book that you can use. So, so how, how did the Arabs 
in general look at you know blacks and north africans oh that's really impressive so the arabs basically they um the old arabs actually they would consider themselves as aswad as okay. black yeah. themselves because as i said black in, Ara in in the arabic language has its complete different meaning um the arabs as i said they consider themselves as blacks and white people are not considered as white someone who's white could be black technically someone who's okay again someone who's white and black could actually be considered white a white person because they would say that someone who's white is good in character is pure in character okay you know what i mean so okay. they they don't have that um social complex of colors really because so they would link like the color of your skin to a, a certain like feature a feature exactly yeah. for example um white people are not literally white right they have like a bit of a red complexion yeah so white people the old arabs would um consider them as the red people okay you know the roman people were considered as red people right okay, so that's really interesting and yeah. to, just to know about it and just to see how arabs like um perceived everything like the early muslims and another thing is that okay where does the racism come from then Hmm. you know that's right so this is as, as, as an, in part one is, is chapter on uh, anthropology and how it, it creeped in into the islamic way of thinking yeah and um, just amazing that that you have references on that as well that the story of ham which is a biblical story hmm. um that ham was destined to be a slave you know then you have these greek um even before that you had greek um greek philosophers i forgot the name now um, he was. He had this a, a similar theory that black people are destined to be slaves. So that you know, at, around the ninth, seventh, eighth century, ninth century, some Arab thinkers and writers got that idea as well. It creeped into their belief system without whatsoever, without any um, any um, evidence from from Islam. So that's where it came from. This, this perception of. Um, yeah, of, of 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 having black people as slaves or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So it's from basically the Roman times and all of these pagan times. Yeah. That it basically creeped in. Yeah. To the Islamic world. Yeah. And it basically it's from the biblical story of Ham. Okay, from yeah. the biblical story. Okay. Yeah. Ham, Ham was the son of Nuh al -Islam Okay. In the biblical context. Just like yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, that's basically how blacks were looked at yeah. from the Arab perspective. Yeah. But now. Did you like? I'm sure there's many black people who also had an impact yeah. on Ara on the Arab world. Yeah. And does the, does the book cover some of that? That's it's, uh, you know, as I said, this book is a is a full whole. You know, it has a whole. It takes a whole perspective on hmm. on blacks and not only blacks, like Africans in general, okay. right? And the history that how how they brought things into Islam. I exactly, think. and like okay. so. That's another part, for example, mm. that it, um, what's the chapter called, man? It's just a lot, yeah. It's, so you can't yeah, so des describe it like in um, two words. Hold on. So um, it's it's basically it talks about like um, elevated um, status of blacks, right, or like black personalities. And it's really chronologically. It starts with the companions, um, all these great companion and Bilal, Bilal, yeah, even Rabba, yeah. Subhanallah, yeah. Um, so many other individuals mm. who are discussed in this book, and it just and even Negos, yeah, the 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 okay. king from Najashi, Nazashi, the king from Ethiopia, yeah, um, who gave gave um, refuge to the early to Muslims. The Muslims yeah. There's actually a whole section on him on how he became king. And when he died, and the relation to the Prophet he basically his history. Yeah, um Habiba, you know, she was married. So, so in a nutshell, in a nutshell. Just, just to conclude about yeah. the book, the yeah. book is basically covering Africans yeah. from an Islamic perspective, yeah. talking about people like Bilal ibn Rabah, yeah. Najashi, yeah. what kind of effect they had on Islam, what yeah. they did, yeah. their basic history. Yeah, and, and, and what, 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 you know what is so good about this is because it's really scholarly. Okay. It's just not, the, the book itself is not, I wouldn't say it's a scholarly book, but the references it used, yeah, it has really well-respected um, scholars, classical scholars like Suyuti, uh, Jaws, Ibn Jawzi, Ibn Jahiz, which is, uh, he was himself a, a Abyssinian, a, a black. Okay. He, he used to, he lived um, in Iraq, 
yeah. um, around the 9th century when there was the Sanji revolt, right? So many people don't know what I'm talking about, but mm. once you read this book, it really gives you it just a whole understanding. You know what I mm. like about this book as yeah. well is that whilst you read it, at the beginning, it's all about black, black, black. But throughout the middle, it just becomes so Islamic. You, you forget the colors, you know, mm. it's just especially when they talk about these great people you know yeah like nana asuma which she was a nigerian uh, woman uh, you know she was the daughter of usam bin fodio another nigerian man really islamically baba ahmed um all these names that you know what it's great so people great people and, and they were to, to, to be to be specific great african people right. who made an input into islam islam exactly yeah, in, and they benefit islam in great ways so bro yeah. i want to conclude and i want to ask you two questions yeah yeah how has this book impacted you yeah number one yeah and why would you recommend people to read this book okay that's brilliant first number one how it has impacted me it just to be honest not because I'm black, well, yeah. because I'm black. Yeah. Um, it gave me like a sense of identity, like mm. like how you know because usually like even when you see lecturers, mm. it's all about you know Andalusia, all about Iraq, you know, um, Mir uh, Egypt, mm. you know, the Abbasite dynasty. This book actually gives you history from a different from, perspective. From perspective, exactly, and mm. it just gives me a sense of you know what islam is the true religion because look at how these people were striving and getting bigger and prosperous and s smart and have building civilizations uh, civilizations you know based on, on islam mm. and then it's, it's so it's so brilliant this book sorry i'm i'm logging out a bit mm. but this book is actually it, it describes history until i would say the 17th century, okay, so which then. afterwards was obviously a massive Atlantic slave trade to America and, you know, and the rest colonization of Africa. So this is just before Africa and it just shows you how prosperous Africa was. Mm. Number two, um, you said, why would I recommend it? Because I think it is a duty as a Muslim to know your history, right? And one thing I want to stress on is I don't just read African history. I read... Pakistani history, um, Indian history, uh, Asian history, anything that has to do with Islam, yeah, we should know our history. And this is so much important to me as it should be for you, mm. you know, or anyone else who lives in the Philippines because that's what connects us. We should know the import that all of the different regions exactly. made. Exactly. And, and, and that there's still knowledge and there's still Islam out there that we can branch out, you know, like yeah. places like Timbuktu, you know, there's still so much you know, manuscripts there, up there, so yeah. Okay, assalamu alaikum, uh, brothers and sisters. Um, this is actually, that's it for the f first episode. We've discussed today, Illuminating in the Darkness by Habib Akande. Um, you can order this book on, um, what is it called? Amazon. Amazon's yeah. and just look in internet. I really recommend you to buy this book. It, you know, has a strong internal monologue as well. We'll have a link in the description, inshallah. inshallah. You, can, you can click it and you can order the book, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. And... Next week, we're going to discuss Ibn Jauzi's um, The Devil's Deception. I keep saying next week, I mean next, i.e. next episode. Yeah. Um, if you want to you know, keep up with us and maybe just to share with us on the next video and in the comment section, um, we also recommend you to buy this book, inshallah, on Amazon. We're going to put it in the description as well, just to be you know, ahead, inshallah. And that's it for today. And yeah, pretty much that's it. Just want to quickly add before we conclude, which before we finish, if you've read a book that's really impacted you or that's really changed your life, I mean, be sure to put it in the comment section below. We can look into it and inshallah, we may inshallah. be able to review it as well. Inshallah. So that's it. Jazakallah for watching. Asalaamu Alaikum. That's today for Ikra Club. Psycho.